Hey guys, it's Ashni from Enchant Me Not and I'm here with another video tutorial for you today. We're going to learn how to set up Google Apps for your personal domain as well as setting up a Gmail account for your domain, for example contact at yourdomain.com. The domain I'm going to be using today is ashni.me. So first you need to go to the Google Apps page and you can do this by going to um, the website which I will link below and um, just click on get started. These are all the main functions that you have. You get access to Gmail, the calendar and one of the most useful things is the Google Docs um, as well as other great features which you can talk about later on. So click on get started and first you'll need to enter your domain name so mine is ashni.me. Get started. And here you just need to fill out all your information. So, so you just finish answering these questions on organization information and your own personal account administrator information. And then hit continue below. And what you can do for your administrator account is pick the one you'd like to use. So if you want to use admin or contact, that's what you can put in here. Then enter your password. And if you can decipher what these silly capture images are, fill that in as well. And you should read these. They're very important. Read them. And then just hit I accept, continue with setup. Here's a setup wizard. It takes you through step by step. However, there are one or two functions in here which can be a little confusing, so I'll do this with you anyway. So the first thing you need to do is verify that you do in fact own the domain that you claim to own. So on this page, just click next. And um, you have to go through the verify wizard, which will show up on the next page. And basically, you just need to download a, an HTML document, which you can do by clicking that link, and upload it to your site. Once you've successfully downloaded the file, you will need to log into your cPanel, control panel, or um, into your FTP client and upload the file to your web server. I prefer using the file manager. Um, through my control panel, so I'm going to log in and do that. And you can just click on File Manager. You need to upload this file to the root um, or to the index part of your site, um, not into any of the folders, otherwise it won't work. So um, once you get into your File Manager or whatever tool you prefer using, you can just go in, choose File, and find the file, and then just hit OK. And once it's complete, you can go back and check to make sure it works. So you can just open this in a new tab and you'll get this message. If this message doesn't appear, then it means something's gone wrong and, you're, um, and you need to try it again. So then after that, just click verify. In order to make sure that there's no hiccups um, later on when you're using Google, you should always make sure that this file remains in your um, in your hosting account and it's just to avoid any issues that might happen later on like your account suddenly becomes unverified um, with the security changes that happen pretty much on a daily basis both with Google and most likely with your hosting company this is very important because they might just suddenly refuse okay so here this is the users and groups option and if you want to create more users um, such as a friend or your own personal account or a support account or something for your website, you can go through and do that right now. Um, I'm not going to, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You just need to click through this wizard. This wizard is actually very helpful. So I'm just going to click on do this later for now. And here is where you can choose the applications. Um, you can, I will guess I'll go through this with you. You can just click on next and these are the four main ones you get. And um, 
if you want to set up your email, this is very important. So you want to activate your Gmail now. This does take up a couple of minutes, but um, for the, your email to actually be activated, but it works eventually. So this is the more complicated steps that you might run into. You need to be able to change your MX records for your um, in order for your accounts to work properly. Now I tried setting my MX records up for um, my hosting website, which also needed um, custom name servers, and I was using Namecheap. Name, nah. I was using Namecheap for this. Namecheap.com. It's a great domain register. Um, however, the settings that I made managed to screw up my name servers and they stopped working. So I suggest that you set up your MX records through your hosting provider and not through the domain name. And this is just to avoid any complications. If you can't, for some reason, set up MX records through your host, I suggest you probably find a better host or um, see if you can do it through your registrar. So who is your domain host? If any of these are your domain hosts, just follow through with the options available. I'm clicking on my domain host isn't listed because I want to do this through MX, um, through my host. And then just click next. It'll give you a couple of priorities and stuff. Now this page looks extremely confusing, but it's pretty much just copy and paste. So log back into your control panel. I can't seem to type anymore. So log back into your control panel. And there's an option um, to set up MX records. It's, it's under the mail option. And so just click on MX entry. Now they advise that you delete all existing MX entries. And um, for most, there is already one created. So I'm just gonna go and click delete there. And yes, I would like to delete this record. Open. So go back to your Google apps and copy the first link. Um, Sometimes you need to include the trailing dot. However, in the C panel, um, you don't need to. It does it for you automatically. So take note of the priority level you have here and set the priority to one, enter the first record. And while that's loading, go back, get the second one. The priority level is five for the next one. And these are just, yeah. So then just go and do this for each of these individually. One another reason I suggest doing this through your host rather than through the domain registrar is if something does happen and your host records aren't set up properly, your site could go down completely. And um, and if you know about changing name servers or anything, it can take a couple of days for your site to come back up again. So this is just to avoid any downtime, and I personally prefer working with it. I haven't tried using this on any other um, registrar except for na um, Namecheap, so the set settings could be different on those. Um, once you're done, you can save changes and then just click Next. And so once you're here, once you've saved all the MX records and made sure they're all correct, you can go into the dashboard. I'm just opening it in a new tab. And you'll see that the email service um, is one of the options listed here. You'll need to activate your email in order for it to start the um, start the process of activation. This will just give you a new list of activation or server addresses and stuff you need to set up. However, um, you don't need to follow. Do not follow these. In fact, because you've already already used a different set of um, MX server addresses. So just go down, scroll to the bottom, and say I have completed these steps. And you'll see that this changes to updating instead. And yeah, as you can see, you have other options here. You have the calendar, you have the chat, which is extremely useful, um, contacts, docs, sites, and mobile. However, if you look here, there are more apps that you can actually get. There's um, MailChimp, MailChimp, which I talked about earlier. There's also FreshBooks, which helps you keep track of bills. And you can go into the marketplace and there are hundreds of different applications. Some of them you do need to pay for, which is irritating. Some you get um, a discount because you're using it with your Google account. 
So it's worth going into and having a look at the different options available. So we'll go back to the instructions and now you can just click on next. So if you have more than one domain and you'd like to link them all onto this account, then you can go in ahead and add domains now and follow the wizard. But for now, I'm just going to skip this. And then you also have the option of adding extra security. Again, for now, I'm just going to skip this. But I strongly suggest you go and do this as it's very it, security is important. And now these are setting up other apps that you have. You can pretty much just go and next if you want to see any of the settings or anything um, then you can do so here these will actually give you um, links which go or which go directly to your calendar or your documents and stuff so it's worth going through you can also um, change settings give different users access to different features and stuff so I'm just gonna go and do do this later And, okay, uh, as you can see, we only have one more thing left, user training and support. So if you feel like you need um, help for whatever reason, uh, understanding this, I mean, you're more than welcome to come and ask me. Finally, you have the user training and support screen. So here, um, you can train your users and understand administrative resources, keep up with feature updates, you know, learning the new things you can do with your um, installed apps and get support options. And you're pretty much done now. So you can, once you've gone through all these different steps and it's worth reading through and seeing all the different options you have, you're done. You need to wait for this to finish updating and once it has, you can go and log in. If you refresh the page after about 15 or 20 minutes, you'll notice that the updating um, text has gone from both the email and the chat. So here you can just go and click onto your mail link and it'll, it'll open up a new tab where you can now access your own email at contact at your domain.com and it works the exact same way as normal Gmail accounts do with um, the calendar, the documents and you can always go install some more applications which will then be available at the bottom of the page over here. So I hope this was a nice, easy tutorial for you to follow. If you have any questions, leave them below and please subscribe to our channel.